You know, I don't think it's any secret that uh, in recent decades, the government has made no qualms about going after our Second Amendment rights. Uh, usually they fail pretty catastrophically, uh, especially after 2013, where we had uh, the events of December 2012, where Obama and all his cronies were going to go after gun rights hard. Well, we as a community, we rose up, we fought back, and we won. We beat them back on pretty much everything that they put forward because we enjoy a First Amendment right to actually stand up when the government starts to stick their nose in our business. Well, these days, I think government has gotten tired of that. They've gotten tired of every time they go after Second Amendment rights or any other rights, while well, that pesky First Amendment gets in the way and people speak up and fight back and they, you know, fail in their efforts to reduce the power of the people. So I think they're making a concentrated effort now to go after the First Amendment and then they'll take away the Second Amendment because those two things are interlocked. Uh, you can't have a First Amendment without the Second and you can't have a Second without the First. They just start disappearing if you don't have a First Amendment if you're a Second Amendment believer or you put up any resistance. So I think now media and the government that controls media, most of media is owned by big corporations. It's not like it's private entities. And those big corporations are the same big corporations that pull the string of politicians. So they have been engaged in a concerted effort lately to destroy Americans' support of the First Amendment. And they're doing that by fear. They're scaring you every second of every day. Oh my God, look what happens when these people get together and speak up. Oh my God, look what happens when these people get together and speak up. Oh my God, everyone out there that has an opinion that might be slightly different to the government or maybe even slightly different than yours, you probably want us to step in and shut them down, right? Because they're scary. They're going to burn your house down. Uh, they're going to march into your yard and, you know, rape your dog or whatever, you know, and shave your wife. But, uh, you know, that's just not reality. America is not a scary place. But I'm seeing so many people be scared into a point where here's one thing that bothers me. The gun community has always been about limiting federal powers and federal powers keeping their nose out of state business. So when did gun people start becoming the rallying call for bring in the federal troops and do the law enforcement here in my state? When did they become statists? Because that's a very statist opinion. That's a very fascist opinion. So I'm having trouble kind of uh, uh, rectifying that in my mind, reconciling that in my mind, where why so many uh, gun people now have become statists. Uh, and why so many gun channels are... Uh, happily doing the job of media and the government going, boo, you should be scared. Be scared of your neighbor. Your neighbor's out to get you. They're probably a communist. There's not a lot of communists in this country. Uh, they've been using that since the 1930s, uh, and really big in the 1950s, if anybody remembers McCarthyism. And here's the thing. We ain't one step closer to socialism or communism than we were then. In fact, we're way further away from it. The scales have definitely tipped towards capitalism uh, and probably a little towards fascism. This country is much more in danger by fascism than they are cap uh, uh, socialism or any other type of ism. Because for socialism or anything like that to take over, we would probably, we would have to have our government pretty much give up power. And that ain't going to happen. For fascism to take hold, all they got to do is start taking more and more power. And we're watching them do that every day. So I wouldn't be worried so much about, uh, you know, oh, your neighbor is a communist. I don't have any communist neighbors that I know of. I mean, I know there's a few ragtag communist groups probably running around America right now. There's also some ragtag racist Kate Ku Klux Klan people. I don't concern myself with either one of them. Uh, they aren't powerful. They aren't plentiful. And they aren't right. <laughs> and they're on the wrong side of history. And histories keep moving forward and leaving them behind. So I ain't too worried about that. But like I said, it, it does make me sad to see so many gun channels like Active Self-Protection and uh, over on Instagram, Mr. Guns and Gear and channels like Guns and Gadgets where their whole channel revolves around, well, pretty much scaring you and then selling you stuff. Scaring you, then selling you stuff. And that's the whole problem that's uh, uh, wrong with the uh, firearms market right now that they're using fear to sell. But unfortunately, when they're doing that, they're helping the politicians and the media spread that whole notion of fear. The country's burning down, cities are collapsing, uh, which is garbage. I went to see a comedian the other night, Tom Papa, some of you might know him. And one of the first things he said is, geez, I, uh, uh, 
uh, looked at the news before I came to Portland and I was like, should I go? It's like the city's on fire. He said, then I get here and he's like, and I go downtown with my daughter yesterday and he's like, there's like one block of, you know, craziness. And then you go another half a block and you're eating tacos out of a food truck watching people juggle. He said, 99.9% of the city's just fine. And I'm like, yeah, that's the way it is. But if you listen to the media, the world's burning down. And that ain't the case. You know, it's like, like I said, like Mr. Guns and Gear on Instagram, violence, 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 danger, violence, danger, danger. Buy some coolers, buy some, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that seems to be the common thread. And on uh, YouTube, ask all that violence, violence, violence. This is going to happen to you. Yeah. If you're a part of a drug cartel in fucking Brazil, maybe. You know, but uh, let's offer some context and stop trying to make everybody think the world's burning down. Because the the uh, effects of this is that we're doing the media's job for them. We are doing the politician's job for them. We have become a, a group of people now that are promoting federal soldiers marching into cities and enforcing federal law. Instead of letting the police departments and the local officials handle it how they see fit. And if we decide we don't like how they handled it, we vote them out of office. But when did gun people become statists? That's what concerns me. Like I said, the media is trying to destroy the First Amendment. They're trying to get it to where people are saying, the world is burning down. We got to stop these people from expressing their opinions. We got to start saying they can't join, uh, get together in big groups. They can't do this. They can't be on private property. They can't be on federal property. They can't be you're just limiting, 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 limiting the First Amendment. And people are gladly doing so because they're scared. And I'm telling you right now, they're going after the first so that they can get the second. And once those two fall, nothing else stands, period. Once those two are gone. And that's the game they're playing. And I'm, it just makes me sick to see so many people playing into that game. I know it sells products to make people scared. But is it more important right now to raise Smith & Wesson's profit percentage by 25% or is it more important to build a gun community full of thinking, rational people who stand together and defend the First Amendment and the Second Amendment? What's more important? Is it more important to build a gun community that becomes smaller and smaller but keeps hoarding more products or is it better to build our community, make it bigger, become more inclusive to people? Don't do things like, oh yeah, they used a gun to defend themselves but they're Democrats. Even if they are or they aren't. Like James Yeager put that, that meme out. Like, oh, fuck them. They're Democrats. Yeah, is that really helping the gun community? Is that the attitude we want to have? I'm like, they exercise their Second Amendment right. I don't give a fuck about anything else about them. I'm not telling you they're wonderful people. They're fucking lawyers. I'm sure they're scumbags. But they were right in exercising their First Amendment right. The people at the Chipotle, or was it a Chipotle? I think it was a Chipotle, uh, who were harassed by the black mother and her daughter. Are we going to say, oh, well, then fuck them then if we find out they voted, you know, they donated money to uh, Obama or something? Is that the way the gun community behaves now, that rights are only for certain people? Uh, I don't want to see that happen. And I get sick of seeing people in the gun community spreading that fear, fear, fear. The world's burning down. I can stand on my roof and I can see for 100 miles in every direction. I don't see anything burning down. And I live right next to Portland. Go on your roof, stand and look around. See if you see anything burning down. If you don't, Maybe you should be like, well, why is the media telling me the world's collapsing? They're taking advantage right now of coronavirus and the fact that no one's got anything to do but others to sit around and watch TV and they're just filling you full of fear, 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 fear. And then they're filling full, you full of the whole, the government's the only one who can save you. The government's the only one who can save you. And people are falling for it. Yeah, bring in the federal troops to my neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, Really? People who believe in the Constitution want that happening. People who believe in limiting the federal powers want that happening. It's, it's disheartening. Uh, it's sad. Uh, I recently went on a rant to, to, and lost a lot of subs for it. And I was planning to lose a lot of subs for it. And it was worth it to get people to respond. Uh, because since then, people started coming to chats. They started going, you know what? It's, you're right. The world isn't falling down. We had one uh, YouTube channel. I can't remember his name. Something tactical. Made a video about how Seattle is like a war zone. I'm like, I was there multiple times. And the only thing you're telling people by saying that is that you have no fucking clue what a war zone is actually like. A bunch of teenagers occupying a block of territory, or two blocks of territory that the mayor ceded to them is not a war zone. 
it ain't even close. I was there multiple times. I look like a narc and the worst thing that happened to me is someone slapped my phone out of my hand for filming their face when I was actually not intending to film their face. I was holding my camera out like this while I was showing my hat to someone. And that's the worst thing that happened to me. And even that person ran away after he realized no one else was going to support him because uh, the other people that were standing there were Black Lives Matter people who they were having trouble with. But like I say, it wasn't a fucking war zone. If you think it was a war zone, maybe we should put you on a plane and send you to a war zone. So maybe you'll have a little more perspective when you make your videos and quit trying to scare people. Because all these channels, all they're doing to me is showing me that I have no grasp of scale. I don't understand perspective at all. Uh, I can't, uh, I don't, I, I think if there's a thousand people and one does something wrong, then they must all be wrong. You know, that's just what I'm seeing from people. And this whole statist attitude of send in the troops. Like I said, it's just sad. I know I'm rambling, but it's sad. I ask every person out there, if you're a member of the gun community, what path do you think we should be taking? Should we be rallying around people who exercise their Second Amendment rights? Should we be rallying around people who legally exercise their First Amendment rights? I'm not saying support protesters or rioters or anything like that. Let the police handle them. Uh, I don't. I don't agree. I don't agree with that whole "please stand down." Although I do understand it to a degree. Like I say, anyone who's had police experience. What I really don't understand is people that are have been police officers or still are police officers, like guns and gadgets, etc. And they don't understand why police don't storm in when they try to tear down a statue. Well, if there's 500 people trying to tear down a statue, and the police storm in, probably what we're going to lose is. Uh, maybe a couple police lives or at least lose their health uh, and maybe lose some lives of some protesters who may or may not be good people. If they don't storm in, we lose a statue that we can replace if they manage to tear it off. That's why they do that. You can always hold people accountable for their crime afterwards if they damage property. Put them in jail. Make them work it off. You know, we need roads cleaned. We need all kinds of stuff work off replacing that statue. And then if it's a questionable statue that people can't agree on, put up a statue you can agree on. Put up a Bigfoot statue. <laughs> Something like that. Something cool. Put up a picture of fucking, a, a statue of fucking Santa Claus. Everybody likes Santa Claus. I think even Jews like Santa Claus. So do something like that. But there's a reason they stand down sometimes and I give them that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of standing down. I'm a big fan of dealing with uh, the people doing the bad things. But I'm also like, where's the respons personal responsibility of people who own businesses and shops? Why aren't they there protecting their own stuff? Uh, I would be. <laughs> if, I, if I still had my restaurant downtown and I knew the protesters were going to be going by, I'd be in there with my shotgun. First one of them that kicked in the door would get a blast to the face and the others would probably decide to go elsewhere. Uh, and I would be totally within my rights to do so. But uh, I just don't uh, understand, like I said, the whole status mindset that's taken over the gun community, the whole fear mindset that's taken over the gun community. I, I, I recognize the fear one. I understand the fear one because it's being promoted actively because it sells products. But as far as that whole status thing that's coming along with it, the march in the troops and tr let the government deal with it and, you know, blah, 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 violate, take away their First Amendment. I don't get any of that stuff. Because like I said, right now, the media and the politicians, they have almost given up on taking our Second Amendment rights without a fight. So what they're doing now is they're going to take away First Amendment rights or at least make people question your First Amendment rights. And then they'll take away our Second Amendment rights. And unfortunately right now, a lot of channels on the internet, a lot of gun channels especially, are helping them do just that. 